Welcome to another episode of the True Crime Tales. Today's episode is called The Pig Butchering Romance. It was the start of December, and during this time everyone was getting ready to feel festive and joyful. Marvin was no exception. He was looking forward to this holiday time this year. He started a small business, and he was finally starting to make a good life for himself. He had it all. He had gotten a new house and a new car. This year, he was going to make it better and spend it feeling the joy of the holidays. He wanted to invite some friends from work over, but he felt shy to invite them, so he was going to spend the holidays alone. He had talked to others about someday having a get-together at his place, but it never materialized. He was still okay with that, but he really wanted to have someone to talk to and be with this holiday season. Time had come that he could close the business for two weeks and give his employees some well-deserved time off from work. It was a few days before Christmas, and he was just watching TV and doing some end-of-the-year paperwork. These are the times that Marvin hated being the owner because he had to do it all. He did not want to hire outside help because they are so expensive, and he was still new to the business world and needed to save the money. He was doing well, looking and finding all the deductions that he could find to help him reinvest in his business. This year was looking good for him and his business. As the day was winding down and getting late, he got a message on his social media page. It was a simple message. Message read as hi, nothing more. He thought that it might have come from a person at his work, so he replied to it just asking, How are you doing? After he sent the reply, he started to wonder as to whom could have sent him that message. Only very few people knew his social media account. He was thinking that it could have been a missend or even just a joke. Within a minute, a ding came and the reply read, I am doing fine. Hope that this finds you in good health and that you are doing well also. He was intrigued by who this person was. He thought about it and even the idea that it was a prank crossed his mind. He had to find out who this person was. The casual conversation continued for a while and Marvin started to like it. He had nothing better to do at this time, so why not just pass the time for a while talking and trying to guess who this was? He asked, Who are you? The person on the other end told them their name, which was Ella. He thought to himself and thought that he knew no one with that name. He asked how they got his social media name and how they were able to contact him. The other person started to tell him how he was found online. They told him that they saw his profile online and that they wanted to talk to him. He was confused. Why would anyone unexpectedly just want to talk to him for no good reason? He had lots of questions, but most pointed to one thing, fraud. He had to ask more to find out the motive or to see if it was a fraud or just someone from work playing a joke on him. He broke down and started a conversation with Ella. One of the first things he asked was for a picture so that he could see to whom he was talking. Ella sends him a picture of herself. He looked at her and thought, wow, she is too pretty to be real. This had to be a joke and a picture of just someone they pulled off the internet. He had to find out. He asked her if she knew what he looked like, and she did reply, yes, I know your looks. It is on your profile, she replied. He felt silly to ask that but he never thought that his picture was already on the internet associated to his social media account. He put that behind him and was happy to talk to someone other than just watching TV or listening to the radio. He asks her if she had an account. He could see her on and see what type of messages she posts on it. She gave him a link to her account. He took some time to look at it. There were a lot of posts on it to look at. 
She looked like a highly active lady and posted a lot of her travels and her upscale lifestyle. He was intrigued by what he saw, but still had this feeling it was too good to be true, thinking why someone would unexpectedly contact him for no reason. He still thinks that the only reason had to be for them to get something from him. A scam. They had spent many hours just talking, laughing, and having a good chat. They talked about how they love to travel, just relax in front of a TV, watch a good movie, and pass the day from the normal routine of working. Marvin was wondering what type of work Ella does. In the pictures she sent it showed him that she had a good life and good things. He asked her what does she do for a job. She told him that she works for a major company and one of its subsidiaries that engages in gold, stocks, real estate, cryptocurrency. She told him that her field is diversified. Marvin thought, wow, which is good. He thought that would explain why she has good items around her in the pictures she sent to him. She was happy talking with him and Marvin also was happy to speak with her. As time grew on, they had to stop talking cause by this time it was early morning. Both had no idea that they had been talking for over five hours. They gave each other a happy sign off and both headed offline to sleep. The next day came and since it was the holidays, he had time off and was eager to log on and talk with his new friend. She came online after a few hours he left a message for her. She told him that she was busy, and he understood that she was busy and that she had a job to do also. She was off the rest of the day, and they sat around talking. They bonded over their shared love of travel and visiting unfamiliar places around the world. Marvin told her that he had no time to travel, but someday he dreamed of it. She also agreed with him, as she too had no time. The only traveling they both could do was on TV and looking at beautiful pictures of long, unreachable places online. Over the coming months, Ella and Marvin would develop a friendship that quickly evolved into an online romance. As time went on, the idea of this whole thing being a scam got further, and further from his mind. He is now under the impression that this is turning into something good for him, and finally, he has a purpose in his life to avoid lonesomeness. Ella then produced an idea that they should meet and make a small trip somewhere to just get away and see and meet each other in person. Marvin did really like that idea, but he told her that with his company, he would have planned it accordingly. She understood, and they both knew that if they did make a trip, it would have to be short and maybe over a holiday to get the maximum time out of a brief time together. They both agreed and started to plan their time off and time together. He was honest with Ella that a lot of his money was spent in his own company and was not cash rich and could not just plan trips and put it on the company as a business trip. He felt it would be wrong and if Marvin would get audited for this could cost him his integrity with his own company. Ella understood. She then had an idea that could get him some extra money and after a few investments he could have the money to allow them to escape and get their getaway that they both wanted. Ella offered to teach Marvin how to trade foreign currencies. Her parent company was Forex and they are very well known for trading currency worldwide. She told him that since her subsidiary company was connected to Forex, she could teach him and get him some particularly useful info and rates. He was not sure if it was a clever idea or not, much less if it was even legal or just a way for her to get his money. After a lot of thought about this, he finally agreed to try a small amount. At first, Marvin gave Ella about $100 to invest in her firm. She was glad that he trusted her to make this trade with him. She was happy he took the leap to learn how to potentially make money. Ella structured a plan to invest his money in their first trade together was a bet against the Japanese yen falling in value. When Marvin saw he had made $20 on a $100 trade, he was sold. After his first trade, he thought that was easy. He knew the risk that it could have gone the other way and easily had lost his money. Ella told him that her company specialized in research and checking different countries for how their currency will do against the dollar. They talk more about how he can do better next time. They spoke about raising his fund to $1,000. He gave her the money and told her to do that magic again. 
She then deposits his money into the firm, and Ella told him that she would not put it up just yet. She told him that at the present time it was not a good or stable time to invest his money on a bet that any currency will produce. He was glad to hear it sounded like she had his best interest in mind. As the days passed, she put his money in on the same bet. Ella told him it was driven by a government project that would drive the currency up, so she bet on that. She put it all in, and Ella left it in there for a few days. She then pulled it out and informed Marvin that he had made $350 on that investment. Marvin was very happy and very glad that he trusted Ella and that his trust in her produced a good return. Marvin told Ella to just reinvest all that into another trade that she sees as a good fit for them. He told her that after all this is for their good weekend getaway when they can get the timing right for them both to have time off, and time to get away. He was thinking that he wanted to have about $10,000 for a good vacation for the both of them. He told Ella that she had more work to do to reach his goal. Ella said that if he really wanted to meet that goal, he would have to put up more money to get it faster. Marvin thought that after the few good investments they made that he was on a roll. Sure, why not? Marvin put up another $2,000, giving Ella $3,000, $350 to bet with the next time she thought would be a good time. Ella was happy that he was trusting her, and she wanted to do better the next time they got the chance. She saw her opportunity and she took the money and bet it on the euro going down. She placed the bet on that it would devalue, and that would give them the money they need to escape and go out on a weekend date. The next trading day, she pulled the money out with a great return on investment. She got a cool 7000 $750 this time. When Marvin found out he made that much, he was sad that he did not do more but was glad he was near his goal. Ella approached Marvin with another plan of hers. She wanted to move more money on a big bet she had in the works. She showed him the paperwork of his account before and after if the bet were to pay off. It would require a sizable amount of money to pull this off. She told him that she will match whatever he puts in on this deal. Marvin was really intrigued by this deal, and with Ella putting up the money as well, he felt that he could not fail. Marvin then transferred to his investment account $30,000 more Ella, then put in her money to match him. He was very nervous about this amount her sent to this bet Ella put in the deal, and she waited three days then pulled out the money. When all was done, she pulled out $120,000, and after the money she took out, they both made $60,000. Marvin was so excited. He doubled his money. He had a taste of how he and Ella could make a lot of money. He thought about it and transferred into his account another $70,000, giving him a little over $130,000. He knew that his fees were minor, but it did eat up his $750 that he had before. To him, that was nothing compared to what he and Ella were getting in return. Ella reinvested his money into the currency market again. She also, as good faith, put in another $20,000. She took that and invested it as she did before. After she added her money, they were at $150,000 to bet with on the currency this time. Marvin's paper profits grew handsomely. In matter of two weeks, his balance went from $130,000 to $310,000. Marvin told Ella that he was now planning to pull out his money at this point cause to him, he had well more than what his goal was and that they could meet and have a really great time together. When Marvin went to pull out his money, the penny dropped. The brokerage house froze Marvin's account claiming that Ella's generous $30,000 gift was a suspicious transaction. Ella claimed her account was frozen too. OMG Marvin said, We are the same. The brokerage house asked that Marvin pay back that gift to unlock his full account balance. Marvin had planned to do so anyway as they did before, but sent them nearly $25,000 to settle the debt. The scammers settled into a predictable pattern, pumping Marvin for more and more fees and taxes. Marvin paid $64,000 in apparent penalties, urged on by Ella. When the scamming operation asked him for another $65,000, Marvin realized there was no chance he was getting his money back. When Ella pressed him to pay the brokerage fees, Marvin snapped. 
I've filed a report to the FBI and the SEC, he told Ella. Marvin has considered filing for bankruptcy. His local Hawaiian bank has closed his checking and savings accounts, according to a letter from the bank. Marvin said a bank employee told him his Crypto.com wire transfers were the reason for the closure but didn't offer any more information to him. He's filed multiple complaints with the FBI, Secret Service and regulatory agencies but hasn't heard back from any of them. Marvin's losses form just a small fraction of the billions of dollars lost to scammers from thousands of victims. In 2022, the Department of Homeland Security estimated scam-related losses at over $3.3 billion. In the U.S., law enforcement is still grappling with how to seize and restore victims' funds. In California, Santa Clara County Prosecutor is pushing regulators and law enforcement to better understand how these scams work. Marvin said he's been in regular contact with the FBI about the scam. They traced Marvin's Bitcoin to a wallet that's received more than 59,000 Bitcoin, worth about $1.6 billion, since 2019. The trail ends after that wallet, which regularly transfers its contents to the crypto exchange. Crypto exchanges are convenient waypoints for scammers because they have a trusted reputation and massive trading volume. All exchanges have warned of the dangers of crypto scammers, but for some, that isn't enough. Marvin said, I'm not asking you to take responsibility of getting my money back, but he pointed out that his scammers had used the same wallet for months. The FBI said that while private partners in the banking and crypto industry often are conduits for these kinds of scamming operations, they are also ideally positioned to cut off the supply of fresh money to pig butchering networks. We are essentially fleecing our entire middle class of their generational wealth and handing it to bad actors overseas, and nobody's stopping this. Within hours, Marvin's scammer sent him the new domain name and begged him to respond to her. Marvin ignored her. The next day, Ella wrote, disappointing men with no sense of responsibility. Marvin had no idea he had become ensnared in a romance scam known as pig butchering from a Chinese proverb. The name coming from the idea that scammers must fatten up victims first with flattery and fake bonding before stealing their money. This is one of many stories from this scam. They are still going strong and using new names, new domain names, but using the same old tricks to swindle people out of their money. Experts say it's easy to dismiss victims of these scams as ignorant or foolish, but doing so discounts how manipulative the scammers are. At the third stage, the scammers offer to teach the victim how to trade cryptocurrencies or foreign currencies. The scammer networks operate fake trading platforms that look exactly the way they should look. Victims are taught how to trade by their scammer, and the fake exchanges are engineered to show non-existent profits of 15% to 20%. In conclusion, when victims try to withdraw money or have run out of fresh funds, the fake exchanges shut down the accounts and demand payment. Panicked and encouraged by their so-called friend, the victims wire what little money they have left. The exchange and their friend block the victim shortly after. It can take weeks before victims understand they've been scammed and even longer to admit what has happened to them. But experts say many victims are too embarrassed to report their losses. Pig butchering is a real and ongoing crime. Everyone should be on the lookout for this scam, and to those that know this scam, bring it up to the FBI. Let them know so they can bring this scam to the forefront and track these bad actors and put them down and out of business. Thanks for listening to another podcast of the True Crime Tales. Please come again, and remember, please subscribe.